what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Today's video is sponsored by China Matters, which you guys should go and check out. I have put the link down below in the description box. So China Matters is another media which is talking about all these really cool, interesting things all related to China, of course, China matters, China matters. So go follow them on their Facebook and their YouTube. China Matters has asked me to answer some questions about China and I thought, well, let's do that because I love talking about China. So simple, simple thing. So without further ado, let's just get into this video. I have my phone here with all the questions, so let's get started. The first question is, how much do you know about China? Well, I would say on a scale from 1 to 10, I guess we are very close to 10. I would say I know a lot about China. <laughs> Number two is, what do you find most interesting about China? Ooh, so uh, people ask me this question all the time. And to be honest, I can't really put a finger on something specific that makes it so interesting. I guess it's more, I usually tell people that it's a feeling. It's just coming to China is just an adventure without an end. Like seriously, every single day is so interesting. So many different things are happening and the culture, the culture is so fengfu, like it's so colorful. There are so many different things to discover and explore and you learn all the time. It can be everything from learning the Chinese language to learning how to be patient when people from another culture is thinking in another way than you are. Number three, what is a common misconception that you have heard about China? Ooh, there are a lot. One thing that I always hear, that's in Denmark by the way, Danish people have a tendency to say, but all Chinese people do eat dog like all the time, right? And I'm like, oh, nah, not really. I know that some people are eating dogs here, but mostly I don't bump into those people because people here in the big cities, they love dogs, like dogs are their pets, you know, so they're not gonna eat them. And a lot of my Chinese friends have never ever touched the dog meat. Number four, do you think China helps to create global citizens? Why or why not? I think yes, they do, of course. See, China is this very different culture from the West and any other place in the world really and when the Chinese government is sending out scholarships to people from all around the world and ask them invite them to come to China and study I feel like that's how they create global citizens you know they help making this world kind of smaller in in a way yeah because we come here on scholarships and we're able to learn about this culture but we also do study like international topics or subjects in school so yeah i really do feel that china is a part of this global thing number five is name one industry that you think china is leading explain why so this one i had a little difficulty with because i don't really know to be honest i know that china is so developed when it comes to using the phone like to pay with everything like WeChat, Alipay, Taobao, Jingdong, like Waimai, Ulama, like those all of these apps are amazing like these things you can do with your phone wow <laughs> but like an actual industry I'm not really sure which one I would pick number six what happens at the annual two sessions in China's political calendar? Well, let's be honest here, I am not 100% sure. I just know that it's some really important political meetings, but I looked it up and the two annual ses sessions are the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consul Consultative Conference and also the National People's Congress. And during those meetings, you just, kind of get to see a little bit about the plans for the future here in China and around 3,000 provincial administrators, top businessmen and Chinese Communist Party people are expected to attend. So a lot of people are going there and are able to kind of chit chat about what they're going to plan to do in the future here in China. 
Also, why is it important? How does it affect real people and address real concerns? Well, they do discuss a lot of the concerns around here right now. Like one example was uh, pollution, of course. Pollution is almost always on the agenda because even though the sky is kind of blue now, it still is not as good as it could be. It's important for real people to have a look at it as well because well, especially for Chinese, if they have a look at what these leaders are discussing, then they will also kind of get an idea of what they're going to do or what they are planning to do for the Chinese society and the Chinese people in the future. See, I'm not super great at talking about these political things and that's another reason why you should check out China Matters because they talk about this and they know so much more than me. <laughs> Number seven, what do you think they should teach Chinese students in school but don't? So the Chinese school system, education system, whoo, that's a very, very long discussion. Very, yeah, you can spend a lot of time discussing the Chinese education system and I think there are a lot of things that should be changed. I know that teachers are not allowed to hit students, but I still think that they do in some places, which I really would wish they won't, wouldn't do. And then there is this like huge workload, the Chinese students, they have to study all the time for the Gaokao and they start like five or six or seven years in advance. Sorry, Gaokao is the university entrance exam. <laughs> I got so used to just being in China, everyone knows these words. Yeah, so the university entrance exam is just way too tough but on the other hand, I also don't know how they could make a fair system if there was not a Gaokao. And it would be really cool if there were more creative stuff in the Chinese education system. It would be nice if the teachers, you know, played more with the kids and let them ask more questions. Like ask more questions and answer more questions, be a little bit more independent and like think a little bit more on their own and not always memorize. But then again, I also know that there are so many Chinese people, there are so many Chinese students, and in many places there are like 50, 70, 100 students. So if everyone needed to have the chance to say anything, it would be, it, seriously, it would be impossible. Yeah, so it's really hard <laughs> to say what, like, there are some things I would really love them to change, but I also know that there are issues if they actually try to change it, it, it might really, yeah, well, I guess they should build more schools and have more teachers, but then they need to educate, educate more teachers. And if there is not enough, then yeah. So it's actually really hard to say what I really wanted them to change. I would, I would love the education to be a little more chill for everyone. But again, I also know there are too many people and it's a very competitive society, so. Number eight, how has your view of China changed over time? So yeah, I could talk about this all day, all night. How much time do you have? <laughs> so I usually say that China and I have been in a relationship to, since 2011 and we have done like both, we had, have done long distance as well. So I came in 2011, stayed here for eight months. I was crazy in love. I just thought whatever happened in China was just so fun, so interesting, so cool. I was just really, really positive and super naive. But then I went back home, I had a little break, I came back, I was super excited, but then I started realizing, oh, there are actually like some really bad stuff going on here as well, stuff I really don't like. So at that time I had eight months in China again, and I was like, hmm, I don't know, I, <laughs> I just didn't like it, I didn't like it. So I usually say that we had the honeymoon stage, and then we went on to the time when I realized that this other person in a relationship is not perfect and I'm like oh my god how is that possible I thought that person was perfect <laughs> yeah so <laughs> but then afterwards I came back again and again we did some we did some long distance I was away for like a year or so and then I had a quite a, like a bad time again but afterwards I also realized that it was not China's fault it was like my own and there were just some things that didn't really work out so I think, where do I want to go with this? I think I just want to say that I've had like all kinds of stages with China. I've been like crazy in love. I've been like super off. I've been wanting to leave. I've been wanting to come back again. And I think now we're just like on this like good level of like, I love you, but I also hate you a little bit, you know, like on and off all the time, just like any other relationship really. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I've just now I'm just very happy to be here I don't want to be anywhere else I think that's what I wanted to say <laughs>
Number nine. If you could change one thing about China, what would you change and why? So again, this question is like, hello, huge. I could talk about this for ages. But one thing I really would want them to change is, of course, to not block all foreign social media. <laughs> Another one is that I would love the Chinese to make it easier for foreigners to come here because like me, I want to be an entrepreneur and I want to be able to make money in China without being forced to take a full-time job because of a working visa. And I would love to, yeah, I would just love to have that freedom here. I know that it's slowly changing, but it's not changing in Beijing. <laughs> so I'm like, Dang, that's a little annoying. Yeah, so it would be great if the visa rules were easier to get around. That's, uh, I think that's one of the things that's like really close to me. There are a million other things I would like to not be like it is right now, but I could talk about this for like forever. So let's do that in another video. <laughs> Or you can keep the discussion going down below. Number 10, what's one thing in China you've been meaning to do, but just haven't gotten around to it? Well. That is going to Xinjiang and Tibet. I really want to see those places and they're on my bucket list. They've been there since like 2014, I think. I just like other things keep coming up and I'm just like, mm, I really want to go. So those two places, I need to see them. I just need to see them. I love Chinese minorities. I love when it's a little different from the Han, minor or the Han majority of people here, the Han Chinese. Yeah, I would like to go there and like, taste their food, see their places, their temples, and just just learn more. Yeah, those two definitely on my bucket list for 2018 once again. <laughs> Number 11. What is one amazing thing you can do in China but that you can't do anywhere else? Um, well, see, that one is actually also really, all these questions are so hard, <laughs> really hard to, to really answer because there are a lot of things you can do in other places as well, but I just really love to do it in China, like traveling around, learning new things. I guess this is the best place to learn Chinese, Mandarin Chinese. I, I love that I can do that here. I love that I can just like have this awesome life of traveling and studying and doing a little bit of this and that and this and that and still be able to make it run around. I have a lot of freedom here, which I really like. I know you guys are gonna say, did you just say freedom? Yes, I did. Let's not discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of freedom for me just like being able to do what I want to do and especially because I get to work with my biggest interest China every single day that's I think that's what I can do here which I I can do it in other places but of course it's better to do it here because Chinese culture is surrounding me all the time number 12 how powerful do you think China will be in 10 years I seriously have no idea. I only see China moving forward all the time, but I also do know that there are a lot of things that the Chinese government need to look at and fix, you know, and things take time. I think 10 years, not sure how powerful it's gonna be in 10 years, but I know that they're moving forward and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna happen at some point for sure. Um, so that's why I'm really happy that I'm able to be here and just like follow along and see where this goes. Number 13, how do you really feel about China? Well guys, do I really have to answer this question? <laughs> I think you already know. <laughs> As I said before, my relationship to China is very on off, it's very like love, hate all the time, but mostly it's very positive and I just, I love being here. Of course, I don't like the traffic is so crazy. I don't like that I can't access my Facebook when I want to, it's hard to upload videos. But yeah, I think in general, I just really like staying here. I, well, I would say love actually. Like I talk about China all the time. I have, after getting to know China, I've just like made China into my hobby and my career and like everything I really do. I feel like China is always a part of whatever I do. <laughs> If I don't talk about guys, I talk about China. I, I think that's the easiest way to explain our relationship. <laughs> That was all for this video. I hope that you liked it. I'm also really excited to see what you're gonna answer to these questions. Please let me know in the comments below. 
and we can keep the discussion going. Remember to check out China Matters. You can see the links in the description box below. They have a Facebook and a YouTube and they share a lot of interesting content about China all the time. So if you want to know what's going on in China, then make sure to check it out. Thank you again for watching. Remember to follow my Instagram Lena around, Facebook Lena around, Patreon Lena around. Also give me a thumbs up for this video. Subscribe for more videos from Ling Ling below and I'll see you again very very soon. Ling Ling's out, see ya and 再见. Bye bye.